Hello again. As I have said before, I'm a great fan of vaccinations and very glad that we have such a useful medical tool which has helped to eradicate things like polio, TB and smallpox in Britain. I also do not doubt for a moment that a virus called COVID-19 is present in the country and causing illness and deaths. Despite this, I'm beginning to smell a rat with some of the doom-laden pronouncements which I've been hearing lately. As viewers will know, a lot of old and ill people have died over the last year and a half after testing positive for COVID. Young and healthy people tended not to die. This is, of course, the case for all kinds of illnesses, especially those of the respiratory system. They tend to be more hazardous to the old than to the young. When I was young, bronchitis was known as the old man's friend because it often carried away very old people who were suffering and ill. Covid did precisely this last year and to a certain extent this year. An awful lot of sick people and old people, and also people who were both old and sick, have therefore died a few months before they might otherwise have done so. And so now the virus is circulating more amongst healthy people. When it does light upon a sick old person, of course, it may well carry him off. But this is uh, much less common now. On January the 20th this year, 1,820 people died with Covid mentioned on the death certificate. About a fifteenth of that number are now dying each day. So far, I have done nothing other than to describe what has happened and there is no conflict between what I am saying and the official figures. However, we are now told that we are once again in an exceedingly dangerous situation with the risk of many deaths. An emergency has been declared in London by the Mayor. Certainly, the number of infections is soaring upwards. The latest variant of COVID-19 is spreading faster than any of the earlier uh, versions. There are more new cases each day now than at any time before in the epidemic. We are told that a serious situation is emerging and that sterner measures are needed to combat it. I am puzzled about this though. The number of infections by itself is hardly important whether the infection in question is Covid, impetigo, athlete's foot or the common cold. The only question is what harm these infections will cause. So if cases of impetigo spread exponentially around the school, we don't worry too much because nobody dies of impetigo. In the same way, if the common cold is spreading rapidly in the town, there is nothing much to worry about because most people will recover easily from it. With COVID, of course, some people will not recover they will instead die. If an increasing number of people were dying from COVID, then this increase in rates of infections would be worrying. So what is happening with deaths according to the government's figures? On Wednesday, 164 people died in Britain within 28 days of testing positive for COVID. On Thursday it was 145 and yesterday the number had fallen to 111. This is decidedly odd. The number of cases is rising at an astonishing rate and yet the number of people dying is falling. The number of deaths in the last seven days is 5% lower than the number of deaths in the seven days before that. In other words, we are in the middle of a serious crisis and yet the number of people dying appears to be falling. I can think of one or two explanations for this situation, which I might go into on another occasion. We are told that deaths will rise though, and if they do, then of course the case will be altered. I don't understand though why, rather than talking about the number of deaths as everybody has previously been doing, the only thing the experts want to tell us is that the number of cases is rising. 
This is no doubt true, but unless a lot more people are dying or hospitals are being overwhelmed, I can't see that the infection rate is of much interest to ordinary people. According to yesterday's figures, there were only 14 more people in hospital with COVID than there were the day before. That hardly seems like a dramatic increase. Assuming that all the figures which we are being given are accurate, it is difficult to see what the danger actually is. I really don't understand why all the mention now is about the rate of infection and none of it is about the number of deaths. It looks very much as though we are being prepared for more restrictions, perhaps even a lockdown, but I'm not at all sure how much appetite the public has for such a measure.